This program is sponsored by the Church of God International and supported by our viewers. The Bible claims to be the omniscient voice of the only living, true God. Yet, if this all-knowing, infinite Creator does indeed retain preeminent knowledge, which includes the future, why is it so many Christians today prophetically believe the Bible is silent about the identities of the British Commonwealth nations and the United States of America? Doesn't this seem a bit odd? Smaller Arab nations are mentioned in the Bible, Egypt, Libya, and many others. Why not the greatest nations in the history of the world? Or could this omnipotent, omnipresent, all-knowing God be that derelict? Or could it be we are missing the necessary insight to the biblical identities of these two enormously influential world cultures? Incredibly, both have enjoyed such wealth and power for so many years, the question begs an answer. Why? Why is it? Is it because they embrace the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Is that the connection to their success? Or is it fulfilled prophecy? Are they identified in the Bible? Stay with us as we attempt to introduce the revealing insights surrounding this mystery on today's program. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our families, to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God, a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Bill Watson. Well, hello, and again, welcome to another international telecast of the Armor of God. Good to be with all of you once again. You know, at the outset of the program, we attempted to present a question that certainly is a conundrum, I would think, for many of us. So many in the Christian community today believe that the Bible has no mention of the United States of America or the British Empire. These two cultures that admittedly have had such an enormous influence of worldwide proportions to think that an omnipotent, omnipresent God would not mention such a large, enormous, gargantuan influence on mankind is almost kind of derelict of duty, especially when you compare that with the reality that well, most scholars, and frankly, most that are familiar with the Bible have no problem connecting Ishmael with the Arabs today, or the Persians with Iran, or Esau with Edom and Turkey, or Ammon with Jordan, or Libya with Put, or Tubal or Tubal Cain, or Mesek with China and Russia over there and, and the other countries in the Asian steppe Pacific Rim area of the world, they have no problem in connecting these biblical names with these particular small nations, comparably speaking. And I say that comparably speaking in all due respect to that of the legacy of the United States of America and the British Empire. And you have to admit, I mean, you know, you, you cannot deny history. We can attempt to try to rewrite it because political correctness doesn't allow us to talk about colonialism or imperialism. But suffice it to say, my friends, the fact of it is there was a lot of good influence that was brought to a lot of primitive cultures throughout the 16th, 17th, 1800s and early 20th century that many of those folks benefited from, whether it was in commerce, whether it was in hygiene, whether it was in technology, you name it, look at history. This is not a teaching of the Church of God International, nor a, a promotion from the Armor of God program. It's just simple historical fact. So it begs the question, why would an omnipotent, omnipresent, all-knowing, all-consuming God, prophetically speaking, not mention two very large, enormous cultures of influence on mankind that has not just lasted a decade or two or three or a century or two or three, 
But how about a half a dozen almost centuries? Five, six hundred years, you can make the case that the influences of these cultures have been prominent on the face of planet Earth. Well, I want to address this question because I submit to you, no, the Bible does mention the United States of America and Great Britain, and that it does go beyond just claiming the Jews as Israel. You see, my friends, that's part of the problem. Many people get stuck in the mud thinking that only the Jews represent the comprehensive definition of Israel. Until one begins to recognize the distinction between Israel and Judah, the divided kingdom period, and how for over 200 years the nation of Israel was a divided kingdom, and four books of your Bible are dedicated to outlining that fact. Second, first and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. Both are dedicated to outlining the fact that there were two distinctive nations that defined who and what Israel was. I submit to you, until you recognize the distinction between the name Israel and the name Judah, you confine yourself and limit yourself to understanding the prophecies that are alive and quite relevant to the day and age and time we're living in. I want to talk a little bit about identifying the United States and the British Empire in your Bible today. But before I do, let me go ahead and interrupt myself here, as we often do, to present to you two offers that we have free of charge for your asking. All you've got to do is dial that 888 number, 578-8791. Ask the operator to obtain both of these free offers. They're basically two audio uh, offers. One is a single tape titled Premises Proving the United States and Great Britain are indeed carrying the name Israel. It's about a one-hour presentation. It will be very complimentary to what I'm about to introduce to you today. You need to get this in order to get the rest of the story, as they would say. Additionally, we have a 12-hour lecture series on the historical tracking and tracing of the migrations of the northern ten tribes of Israel and how they became the United States of America and the British Commonwealth, the British Empire. It's titled The Biblical Origins of the USA or the United States of America and Great Britain. You'll get one tape with a coupon to send back for tape two. I think there's a total of perhaps, um, uh, they're not tapes by the way, they're discs, but there's I think about six or seven, maybe eight discs that you're going to get. You get a coupon asking you to return the coupon for the next disc because we only want those that are truly interested in getting this material to really uh, get it because it costs a lot of money, of course, to go ahead and send these discs out. So with that being said, dial that 888 number, 578-8791, ask the operator for both of these offers, the premises proving the United States and Great Britain are indeed modern day Israel and the biblical origins of the British Empire and the United States of America. That website there, www.cgi.org, is also there for your convenience. And of course, we have a feature that we wanted to mention to you, and we've been mentioning this regularly on our homepage, that you will be told times on any Saturday where you can rendezvous and hear a webcasting, a live presentation presentation by a minister of the Church of God International that will be in, uh, giving a presentation on some subject and you can find that time on Saturday available there on our homepage every week. So one more time now, 888-578-8791 and of course that website at www.cgi.org. Now back to the program here talking about where in the Bible is it mentioned that the United States of America and Great Britain are indeed known of God and that God has indeed been involved in the development and maturing of these two cultures. I want to point out, and, and certainly I think it goes without saying, that you, and I've said this before on many programs, can characterize this book essentially as the story of one man's family and I 
understand, many of you are familiar enough with that term to recognize where I'm going with that. And simply stated is, there is a continuum. There is a consistent thread from Genesis to Revelation about the nation of Israel. And it goes throughout the whole Bible. As a matter of fact, you could make the case that many nations are mentioned in the Bible only because they come in contact with Israel. And their interaction with Israel necessitates their involvement and identity to be disclosed in the Bible based on what they did to Israel or what Israel did to them or how they aligned with Israel and so forth and so on. My point is the Bible is primarily a story of this nation, Israel. And unfortunately, through many misnomers, because your Bible, frankly, is about 30% prophetic. It's about another 30% historical, and then, of course, another 30% is roughly dedicated and devoted to values and standards and Christian living, ethics and morals, and teachings uh, of life's truisms. But bottom line is, this Bible is quite heavily laden with prophetic statements that go all the way from the beginning of when Adam and Eve was created till the time Jesus Christ lands on this planet. And each detail and each nuance specifically is mentioned in your Bible of major benchmark value. Major benchmark value. Not every little finite detail is mentioned, but certainly those benchmarks that are very uh, uh, instrumental in the development of certain geopolitical conditions to bring to fruition God's plan are mentioned. And for God not to mention the, the effects and efficacy of the cultures of the United States and the impact that Great Britain has had on humanity in these latter days would be the ultimate remiss or derelict of duty, you would think especially in light of the fact that, as I've already mentioned, we know that he talks about the Ishmaelites. We know he talks about Libya put. We know he talks about Turkey, Esau. We know he talks about Tubalcane and Tubal and Misek, which is China and Russia. And scholars have no problem in connecting these biblical names with these modern-day cultures. So why, I submit to you, why would not God of course, mention the cultures of the United States and, Ameri and Amer of America and Great Britain. These two cultures that have had such an impact on mankind. Well, the fact of it is, God does mention them. And certainly it would do you well to give this some thought and serious consideration, especially in light of what is presently happening to those cultures of the United States of America and Great Britain. Notice over here in Genesis chapter 12, because this is where really the story begins in Genesis chapter 12. And the first premise that I want to mention to, to all of us here today is that you have to tune in to this particular specific and grasp it before you move on so that you can begin to understand a fundamental, foundational premise to the promise God made to Abraham. Right off the bat, you have to understand this. And here it is in Genesis 12. God had said to Abraham, get you out of your country and from your family, from your kindred, and from the father's house unto a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Did you notice that? So he's going to make Abraham physically, materially, a great nation. I will bless you Make your name great, you shall be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you, curse him that curses you. And secondly, notice this, in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now let me cut to the chase, because you see right here are two segments of a single promise. One, Abraham clearly is promised to become a great nation. Many people just consider the fact that ancient Israel of the Old Testament was the fulfillment of that, but not so quickly. Follow me through this. Secondly, in verse 3, the blessings of all the families of the earth shall come through the loins of Abraham. That is a clear implication that provides the understanding that the Messiah would come from Abraham's line. And you can follow the promise of this, what is called the scepter, from 
Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to his son Judah, and then even specifically to the family of David of which Jesus the Christ came from. Over in Galatians chapter 3, I'll just reference it, but in Galatians 3, Paul, writing to the church at Galatia, mentions the fact and clarifies this portion, this segment of the promise, in that Jesus, the seed, and Paul clarifies it there, not seeds, meaning the nation, plural, seeds. No, no. Paul says, no, no, no. The salvation is not by a culture of people. Salvation is exclusively through a single seed, and that seed was indeed, and in fact, Jesus Christ from the tribe of Judah. That not so much importantly other than it confirms God stamp of approval on Christ because that was where the promise originated from, that God would bring, He would steer, He would engineer the reality of that piece of evidence, affirming and confirming that Christ, Jesus the Christ, would be the Messiah. Not any old Tom, Dick, or Harry, but Jesus the Christ because He came from the tribe of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham, which goes back to this original promise. Okay, now with that said, I want you to understand there are two segments. That is an important premise to establish as a fundamental platform in understanding who is Israel today. We understand who the Jews are today, correct? Absolutely. The Jews are over there in Palestine as I speak. We know that they're in a lot of hot water, surrounded by a lot of Ishmaelites, as we would understand and accept, because we understand Ishmael was the father of the Arabs. We have no problem with that. And we should have no problem with the fact that we understand the Jews are over there, because we know Jews are from the tribe of Judah, correct? Correct. However, in all due respect, the question begs to be answered in that are uh, all Israelites Jews? The answer to that is no. The answer to that is no. Your Bible illustrates that by stating there in 1 Kings, 2 Kings, describing wars between the Israelites and the Jews. How do you make sense of that? Well, you make sense of that because Israel was a separate nation away from Judah, which was the nation of the Jews, capital city Jerusalem, and Israel to the north had the capital city of Samaria. I'm not going to go through a history lesson here and digress other than to illustrate to you that over 200 years, Israel existed as a separate nation from the Jews. And the Jews were called Judah, Israel was called Israel. That's just the way it was. And it's important for you to understand that all Jews are indeed Israelites, but not all Israelites are Jews no more than all Americans are in Ohio. No, 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 no. There are Americans who live in Indiana. There are Americans that live in Idaho. There are Americans that live in California, and New York, and South Carolina, and so forth and so on. Not all Americans are Ohioans. But, minus all the illegal immigrants, all Ohioans are Americans. If you understand my drift and get my analogy here, I'm just trying to clarify this distinction because it does do us very good value in helping us to better identify the fact that there were two nations of Israel and those two nations made up the second segment of the promise that we just read there in, in um, Genesis in regards to the two-segmented promise of the scepter and, of course, the uh, great nation. Now, I want to show you that. It's important you understand the promise had two segments. Go over here to 1 Chronicles. I'm going to introduce to you a word. The word is called birthright, and the other word is called scepter. Here we read the distinction between the two illustrating and supporting the substantiation of the fact the promise in Genesis 12 was indeed too segmented. Here in verse 1 of chapter 5, 1 Chronicles, you read, The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph. Reuben defiled his father's bed, he slept with his father's concubine. Joseph qualified, he was the next one in line. So Joseph, 
His other son, one of the 12 sons, remember Jacob had 12 sons. Judah was one of only 12. There were 12 tribes of Israel. Each son represented a tribe. Joseph represented a separate tribe. Joseph was not a Jew. Let me just say it that way. Joseph was not Jewish. Joseph was Joseph. Judah was Jewish. Zebulun was not Jewish. Zebulun was Zebulun. Were they Israelites? Yes, they were all Israelites, if you understand what I'm saying. But they were not Jews. And here we read, listen to this now, his birthright, did you see that? His birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. The birthright was given to Joseph, not the scepter. Let me stop, go slowly here. Not the Messiah. Jesus was not from the tribe of Joseph. Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. You with me? Joseph had a birthright. That was the other segment of the promise. That means he had a promise, but he just didn't have the promise of the Messiah from his line. He had the birthright prom promise, which is identified as material wealth and physical affluence, and that his affluence and wealth and material blessings would overflow his boundaries. Hopefully we'll get to that, and I'll show you that scriptures illustrating in the last days, that's how you would describe the land of Joseph, who was the representative of the two sons called Manasseh and Ephraim. That's another story, but let me just go slow here. Joseph did not have the privilege of having Jesus come from his line. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. And here in Chronicles, it's chronicling this for us. Notice, he says here, the birthright was Joseph, that of physical promises, uh, material wealth and affluence. However, look at this, verse 2, for Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler. That was the scepter, the chief ruler being Christ. Christ was a Jew. The Messiah came from the tribe of Judah. Here, though, it says, but the birthright, the birthright was Joseph. So here we clearly see, we clearly see that the birthright promise was indeed and in fact something other than the chief ruler promise or the scepter promise. And of course it is. We understand, and I tried to sh illustrate that at the beginning, at the outset of this presentation, that Christ was Jewish. But let's go back here to uh, Genesis, and let me just go right to Genesis, and I think it is uh, 35, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Genesis chapter 35 and in verse 10. Here's where Jacob's name, Abraham had a son Isaac, Isaac had the son Jacob, Jacob had the 12 boys who became the 12 tribes of Israel, but where did the name Israel come from? Well, right here is when Jacob's name is changed to Israel. Notice, verse 10, God said unto him, Jacob, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful, multiply. A nation and company of nations shall be of you, and kings, royalty, there shall be a royal line coming out of your lineage as well. Now, fast forward over here to Genesis chapter 48, where Jacob is on his deathbed. He has his son Joseph in front of him. I will paraphrase it. You can read down the description that I'm paraphrasing through verses 13 through 22 in chapter 48. For the sake of time, let me quickly just mention what's going on here. Jacob, the old man, the father named Israel, comes forward, gets his son Joseph, who's got two grandsons of Jacob's, or two sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh being the older and Ephraim being the younger. Make a long story short, this is where the blessing, the birthright blessing. Remember, Joseph was the birthright. He was not the scepter. Jacob is now going to give him the right to affluence and material wealth is going to be passed to Joseph. By extension, his two sons, Jacob's grandsons, Manasseh, Ephraim. And Jacob flips his hand and he blesses the younger Ephraim first. And he claims Ephraim is going to come before Manasseh. Make a long story short, the company of nations is going to come before. The commonwealth of nations, the assembly of nations is going to come before the great nation, Manasseh. Both will be great. Both will be pretty enormous in scope, size, and influence, as pointed out in chapter 49. In a moment, we'll get there. But the fact of it is, the promise of a great nation is now segmented into a great company of nations and a great nation. 
I submit to you and ask, what cultures of people would fit the profile description of a great company of nations and a great nation and acting as brothers? The Jews certainly did not get what Joseph got. Notice real quickly, in Genesis 49, we read Jacob bringing all of his boys together and saying, collect yourselves here. Let me tell you what's going to befall you in the last days. And then he proceeds to profile the latter day descriptions of the sons of Jacob. I won't really go into a lot of digression other than to bring your attention to verse 9 talking about Judah and how he would have the scepter, the Messiah, but going down here to Joseph, look at this, verse 22, he would be a fruitful bough, his branches would overrun his walls, people would hate him, and they would shoot arrows at him, and they would try to cause his strength to be taken away, but the God of Jacob will cause him to prevail, of course, as long as Jacob would, or in this case, Manasseh the tribe of Joseph would be able to stay in line with God. But the, here's the point, my friends. This is an important aspect to recognize. The profiles that are certainly attached to what we understand to be parallel descriptions today fit the United States and they fit the British Commonwealth empires like a glove. And this is why you really do need to get the offers that we're presenting to you, which will be so complimentary. This is just the beginning. So many more premises to prove to you exactly why Israel is, goes beyond just the Jews today. And God does indeed mention the United States of America and Great Britain in the prophetic writings of the prophets. And the voices of the prophets are very, very relative to those cultures today if the truth were known. My friends, dial now, 888-578-8791. Ask the operator for both of these offers, premises proving the United States and Great Britain are indeed Israel, modern-day Israel, and the 12-hour lecture series, probably about a half a dozen discs or so. You'll get one disc at a time with a coupon for you to send back one at a time. You'll get them because we want to be sure that you really do appreciate them and you really do want them. Titled, The Biblical Origins of the USA, the United United States and Great Britain. 12 hours of lecture. It will take you through how, all from point A to point Z and give you all the details that you need to bring your Bible alive. And I guarantee your Bible will come alive with this information. My friends, this is Bill Watson reminding all of you as we always do. You keep on that armor of God so that you may be able to stand in these evil days. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas 75701 or call toll free at 1-888-578-8791 or call one 939 2929 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support. This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers.